Make sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget to share. Assalamu alaikum dear friends. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about a special day called Arba'in. Who knows what the day of Arba'in is? On this day, we remember Imam Hussein, his family, and his companions. There are many, many ways we can remember the martyrs of Karbala. What are some of the ways we can remember them? One way we can remember them is by going to Majalis and learn about them and cry for them. Another thing many people do on Arba'in is go to Karbala to visit the shrines of Imam Hussein and the Shahada in Karbala. The Ahlul Bayt have told us that going to perform the ziyara of the Ahlul Bayt and Imam Hussein, especially on Arba'in, is really, really good and that we get a lot of thawab for it. What does ziyara mean? The meaning of ziyara is visiting our Ahlul Bayt. The Arabic word, word ziyara means to visit. The ziyara of Imam Hussein and the other martyrs of Karbala is very, very special because those who are martyred and are shaheed are able to see us and hear us and they are aware of our presence in Karbala. Today's session, we have something very, very special planned for you guys. Please join us till the end so you can participate in this event. So today we have two special friends, Ali and Amina with their mama and baba are going on their ziyara trip for Arba'in. And guess what? We get to join them on this trip. They will be doing the walk from Najaf to Karbala and showing us all they see and visit during their trip. Inshallah, we all have the opportunity to visit our Imam really, really soon. But for now, are you ready to join them virtually? That sunny afternoon, Baba came in with some great news. The family had just received their passports that told them that they got their visa for Iraq and they could travel. They were leaving after two days. The family was super excited and had a lot to do, so they started packing suitcases with all that they would need during the trip. They packed snacks such as granola bars, chips, biscuits, flip-flops, iPad. They packed a baya for the girls, kanzu for the boys, and some comfy shoes for walking. Finally, the day had arrived. Their mama reminded them that they had to do ghusl and recite dua before leaving. Now, they were all set in their cars, ready to go to the airport. They reached the airport. Baba guided them on what to do. Finally, they hear the ting. It is now time for flight BQ313 to leave for Baghdad. Their hearts started beating faster. They couldn't believe they were finally leaving to go to see their imams, something they were waiting for for years. When they got inside the aeroplane, Ali told Amina, How about I sit with Baba and you sit with Mama while going and when we return we will swap places. Amina agreed and they all settled down. They had a long flight. They loved playing games and eating all the goodies they got. As, it, as time went by, they got super excited and Amina kept on asking Mama, Are we there yet? Have we reached Mama? Finally, they had reached their stop. They landed at the Baghdad airport. They got out of the airport and there was a big bus waiting to take them to Najaf, which was 160 kilometers south of Baghdad. Najaf is famous for the site of the shrine, the haram of Imam Ali a.s. They helped daddy load their luggages in the trunk and got the bus off to Najaf. They arrived at the hotel. 
Amina and Ali were super duper hungry, so they got some snacks out of that Mama had packed in their backpacks. And hmm, it was such a relief. Then Baba said, let me tell you guys a few things. When we go for Ziara, it requires us to follow a few rules. The Prophet has taught us that whenever we go to visit someone, we must be clean and presentable. This also applies to visiting the shrines of the Ahlul Bayt. We should bath, do ghusl, be well dressed, and we should also make wudu before entering the haram. We should take off our shoes before going into the shrines. What is a shrine, Baba? asked Ali. A shrine is a special place where someone is buried. It's normally decorated and very pretty. Most of the Masumins have a shrine where they are buried. While in the shrine, we should be focused on our visit and try to feel connected to whoever we are visiting, answered Baba. Amina and Ali were attentively listening to Baba. After they all got ready, it was time to go to the haram. They took hold of their mama and baba's hand and walked to the haram. As they reached, mama said, Before we enter the door, we should ask permission, just like you would ask permission when you visit someone's home. This is called Idn al-Dukhul, seeking permission to enter the mosque. So repeat and say what I say. O oh Allah, I am standing at the door of one of the houses of the Prophet and the family. May I enter, O Prophet of Allah? May I enter, O Angels of Allah? And then you can say, Assalamu alaikum, and feel the presence of Imam, as though he were still alive in the physical world. He knows you are there and that you have come to visit him, and all your salams do reach him. So they entered, and oh my goodness, it was so beautiful. Everything was shiny and bright. Baba told them inside the Zari were three graves. One was Imam Ali, second was Prophet Adam, and third was Prophet Nu. Imam Ali was born in the Kaaba in Makkah. His father was Hazrat Abu Talib. His mother was Sayyida Fatima bint Asad. Imam Ali was very brave and the hero of all the battles of Islam. He had a special sword called the Zulfikar. Imam Ali married the Prophet's daughter, Sayyida Fatima Zahra, and they had five children. The Prophet on Allah's command had chosen Imam Ali as the leader of the Muslims after him. On the 19th of Ramadan, in the Masjid of Kufa, a bad man called Ibn Muljim hit Imam Ali on the head with a poisonous sword. Imam Ali died two days later and he is buried here. Ali and Amina loved the way Baba explained. When they were done, they walked back to the hotel and Mama said, You better take some rest now as we have our long walk starting tomorrow after Fajr. We will be walking to Karbala, which is almost 50 miles, about 80 kilometers. By walking this long, difficult route in the harsh desert environment, people can express their love and commitment to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the martyrs of Karbala. Ali and Amina had always heard of the Arba'een walk, but never done one themselves. They were looking forward to this walk as they had heard so much from their madrasa teachers on how the people serve the guests of Imam and show so much generosity, in spite of having very little themselves. They wanted to see all this and learn a lot from it so they can go back and tell their friends. Morning, they prayed Fajr, packed their backpacks with a bottle of water, some snacks, and a pair of clothes, and started their walk. Baba told them they can take a break and rest on their way if they get tired. They started off. After every few kilometers, they saw tents, which were called mokibs, where the people who lived in those areas would come to them and ask to let them serve them, either with food, massage their legs if they were tired, or even be their guests at their homes if they wanted to rest. 
Ali was amazed and asked mommy, Why are we getting so much attention, mommy, when we are only walking to the imam? And mama answered, You know, my son, us and all these people walking are the guests, also known as the wars of Imam Hussein. Some of these locals serve whatever they have and it never gets over because they're doing it out of the love of Imam Hussein. They were walking. They came to a station which had food. There were dates, sweet tea. There was also rice and curry. There was something known as kubus, which is an Arabic flat bread cut into pieces. Amina just loved the tea. She told Baba, this is the best tea I've ever had. Baba said, we should take a stop and pray. So they stopped over a tent where some people were resting. Some were getting their legs massaged because they were tired from walking. Their feet were massaged using creams, oils, massage rollers, and everyone was patiently waiting for their turn. This made Ali realize everyone here is so patient and humble and waits for his turn. Mama said, are you ready to start walking now? And they started off again. After a few kilometers, they saw a tent which had a medical sign on it. Amina asked Baba, what tent is this? And Baba said, it looks like a medical tent where they have band-aids, gloves, masks, and they do normal checkups for flu, pains, bruises, blisters, because people don't have the proper shoes or clothing here while walking. And you know what? The doctors here volunteer their time and efforts out of love of Imam Hussein, expecting nothing in return. As they were walking, Mama told Ali and Amina, Look at all these people walking. This is the largest gathering of people in the world that takes place in Karbala. This gathering is even larger than Hajj. You know, some people travel for 15 days just to be here on Arba'in. The children seemed a little tired, so Baba said, Let us rest somewhere. They came towards a tent where a woman had brought them cushions, pillows and bed sheets and blankets as covers. She made sure they were comfortable enough. Ali was so tired. As soon as he kept his head down on the cushion pillow, he fell asleep. Few hours later, Mama woke them up and said, They have a few kilometers left to reach Karbala. They woke up and Amina asked Baba if she could get the tea as it had become one of her favorites. As they had a few miles to cover, Baba said, Soon from a distance you will see round dome and as we get closer you will see tall pillars on the sides of the dome called minarets and on top of the dome of Imam Hussein Salam's shrine there is a red flag. As they came closer they could view it more and more. They had reached Karbala. They saw Baba do a sajda on the ground. Mama had tears in her eyes. This was the place. This was the place their heart was aching to see. This was where their Imam was.
As they arrived, they could see nothing but everyone wearing black clothes everywhere. Mama said everyone from all around the world comes to one destination, the heaven on earth. They entered a gate. Baba said this is Bainul Haramain. This is the pathway between the Haram of Imam Hussein and that of Hazrat Abbas. They saw large groups of people from all around the world holding flags up high and walking towards the shrine. There were crowds carrying tabut, lamenting, reciting nauhas and marshias and giving their salutations to the Imam. In front of them, they could see a door. Here, it was. They had arrived. It was the shrine of Imam Hussein. This was a sight that they had never imagined. They said, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. They asked permission to enter. Again, there were shining red lights. Everyone had tears in their eyes. This was the shrine of the third Imam. Mama explained, do you know there are three people buried in the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? With Imam Hussein are two of his sons, Hazrat Ali Akbar and Hazrat Ali Asghar, who were martyred in Karbala. Although they were excited to see the shrine of their Imam, it made them sad also as they remembered whatever happened on the day of Ashura. They were also exhausted from their walk and decided to go and get some rest at the hotel. Next day, they went to visit the shrine of a very brave and courageous brother of Imam Hussein, Hazrat Abbas. Mama said he was the son of Imam Ali and Bibi Ummul Banin. He was strong and listened to Imam Hussein. He loved Bibi Sakina so much. He went to get water for the children who were thirsty on the day of Ashura. But the bad people hurt Hazrat Abbas and spilled the water he had. He was very sad. Mama said, ask for your wishes here and Hazrat Abbas will never let you go empty-handed. They also went to visit the shrines of the rest of the Shohada of Karbala. A few days later, Ali and Amina felt very, very sad as their Ziyara trip was coming to an end, but they were excited as well to go back home and tell their friends all about their Arba'in trip. Now let us all face the Qibla and turn our hearts towards Karbala and the shrine of Imam Hussein salam, and send our salams along with those who have gone to Karbala. May the ziyara of all of you be accepted inshallah. Please keep me in your duas. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Darkness to light he will change How we call for you today Return to us Mahdi we pray Mahdi we pray Labbaika ya Hussain Labbaika ya Hussain Yeah.